I'm going to try to highlight in this section, try to highlight the, the main differences between the, the permanent magnet and the induction motors. Uh, I'll get into a little bit of, of how they work, a little bit of the physics and really why, um, you know, what the main difference is between the two motors are, why we need to do the encoder, learn for the permanent magnet motors, and why we don't for the, the induction motors. Um, so ultimately, the difference between the two is going to be how the rotor is magnetized. So on a permanent magnet motor, the rotor is going to have actual permanent magnets, rare earth metal magnets embedded on the rotor itself, uh, versus an induction motor where it's actually just going to have a, um, a, a steel rotor. Uh, sometimes they're referred to as squirrel cage motors, but uh, that magnetic field is actually induced. So that's why they call it an induction. So the main difference is just how their rotor is, is magnetized. Um, if you start out on the, on the most basic uh, sense, if you have current going through a wire, the direction of the current is going to dictate the direction of the magnetic field. So kind of a, a quick, easy trick you can do is the, the right hand rule, what it's called. You can just take your thumb point it in the direction that the current is flowing, and then curl your hand around, and that'll tell you the, the direction of the magnetic field. It only works for your right hand. If you do it with your left hand, it's, it's not going to be correct. Um, so again, you know, if the current is moving in the, the up direction, you curl it around. You can see the magnetic field is curling around towards you. Uh, the magnitude of the current is going to dictate the magnitude of your magnetic field. So if the more current you have, the stronger magne magnetic field you're going to have. All right, taking that a step further, talking about an electromagnet. So you can actually use, uh, use these to, to make a magnet. Uh, if you remember back to the middle school or, or high school days, maybe for a, a science fair project, you, you took a battery, you took some wire, wrapped it around a bolt, and you were able to, to pick up some paper clips. Um, I know I did that as a, a science fair project. But uh, basically, uh, when you take the wire and, with, and you pass current, uh, through it, you have a magnetic field. You put it around a, a conductor, so a bolt. Um, you're able to, to make a, an actual magnet. Uh, one thing uh, I'll note here, the terminology, this plus symbol here, uh, that means that the current is going into the page, and the dot here, current coming out of the page. That's how we illustrate um, on a 2D plane kind of what, what it would look like 3D. So if you look at the top here, we've got the plus, so that means the current is going into the page. That's the direction. And then at the bottom, we've got it coming out. And then that would create your north and south poles on that, on that conductor. And if we go a little bit further, um, how, how that works, uh, if you take a, an AC sine wave here, um, the, the polarity of the voltage is going to dictate your direction of your, um, your magnetic fields. So as you can see here, we've got positive voltage. And then down here, we've got negative voltage. Again, that's going to flip back and forth. And you can see here, we've got the, the direction of the, the poles is, is switching. So we've got a, a positive up here, minus down here, minus up here, positive here. So it's just going to switch back and forth when, you're, when your AC sine wave is, is going back and forth. All right, the, the AC stator. Um, so the stator is going to be the, the stationary part of the, of the motor. It's not going to move. Uh, that's where your coil windings are, are going to be at. Uh, so here's a, a picture of what that looks like if you were to, to, to take apart everything. And then the rotor would obviously be the, this middle portion here. Uh, this is going to be what your, your motor shaft is. This is going to be the, the rotating part of, of the motor. <clears throat> Um, the AC stator field, uh, that magnetic field, how, how does that work? Um, here you've got your, your three-phase power uh, coming in. And uh, you can see on, the, on this side here, we've got a north and a south pole. Um, these poles are, are going to be arranged accordingly. Uh, and then that three-phase alternating current, because the, the poles or the, um, these windings, um, as it rotates or as the uh, current goes back and forth through those, those windings, that's going to create the, the stator field. So you can see on this left, left hand side, we've got the, the north pole uh, is up at the top, south pole at the bottom. And if you look at where you are uh, on your incoming side here, uh, you know, we've got the, the phase A is going to be up at the top here, and the other phases are down here. As you go on to this next picture, 
you can see the North Pole moving in a, in a clockwise direction. And you can see your, your phases are changing accordingly. And then it continues to move on to the other side here. Um, so again, as your, as your incoming power um, is, is going up and down the, the AC uh, uh, sine wave, that's going to create that, that rotating uh, magnetic field on the, on the stator. Um, the synchronous speed, that's going to be the speed at which the, the magnetic field is, is rotating. Uh, now for an induction machine, that's not actually going to be the speed at which your, your uh, rotor is rotating at. It's not actually going to rotate at the synchronous speed. Uh, we'll, we'll get into that a little bit. Um, but if you're wondering what it should be, this equation here again, number of motor poles needs to be held constant, needs to be an even number. Uh, through this portion of the presentation, we're going to talk about a six pole motor running at 1200 RPM. It's a pretty common one that you would see in the field. And again, the actual rotor speed is going to be different for an induction motor than a permanent magnet motor. So, what causes that? Uh, as we discussed earlier, it's going to be how the, rota the, the rotor is magnetized. Uh, again, the permanent magnet motor actually has permanent magnets made out of rare earth metals that are embedded on the, the rotor itself. And that creates a permanent magnet field. There are different um, there are some different mounting methods that those magnets may actually be mounted to the, to the rotor, um, but we're just going to focus on a, on a surface mounted configuration. What's the same between the two? It's going to be the motor, the stator itself, and the stator coils. Those are going to be roughly the same be between the two, two motors. It's only the rotor that's different. So here's a, a picture of what those magnets actually look like on the uh, permanent magnet motor. Uh, you can see here, this is what it looks like on the, on the rotor. Uh, David was just saying that um, you know, the tolerances between the, the magnets on, on how they're embedded on the rotor itself um, are very, very small. So if you are, are installing the motor and it gets bumped uh, against something, it doesn't take much to destroy those. Uh, and that is actually going to be reflected in the encoder position that we'll talk about when you do the encoder learn. Um, so kind of talk about why, what causes that, why they so... Um, why are the tolerances so low? You know, why it matters that if your, your position count is only off by a, a few thousand counts, why you can have, that's the difference between a, a running motor and a not running motor. So yes, the permanent magnet motors uh, as a whole, they are more efficient, they're great, uh, but they are much more uh, sensitive to, to those types of things there. The, the physics behind the, the magnet, permanent magnet motor, now if we just think about it, on a real basic level, we've got the magnetic field of the stator here, magnetic field of the, the rotor, and the angle between the, these two north poles needs to be exactly 90 degrees. That's what's going to generate your uh, torque or your rotation, your force, in this direction. Um, if that angle is not 90 degrees, uh, the motor will, will require more current to generate the required amount of torque. That would be your high current situation. So the motor is saying, hey, I'm not at 90 degrees. I need to generate more torque. I need more current to do that. You'll have a high current situation. Um, you know, here is a, uh, a good example of the, the two magnetic fields are 90 degrees away from each other. So that, that looks good there. Uh, here's an example where the angle is actually less than 90. So we've got the stator field, but here's the the rotor field here, it's less than 90. This is going to cause a, a high current situation. And then, a, as with this one as well, we've got an angle greater than 90 degrees here. Again, that, that maximum torque, I, I can't emphasize enough, is going to happen when those two fields are 90 degrees away from each other. If they're off just a little bit at all, the motor is going to draw uh, a higher amount of current to generate that same amount of torque that's, that's needed. And again, this is where the, the encoder learn um, that procedure. What we're doing there is we're getting the position of the rotor in relation to one of the, the motor poles so that we know exactly which angle we can put the, the stator magnetic field out at. All right, so the, the induction motors, what's different here? Uh, you, it's pretty apparent the, the rotor itself 
Uh, it's got these uh, steel laminations, as they might be called, or again, squirrel cage. That's another uh, common terminology. Um, there's no, no magnets here. It's just, a, it's just these steel, steel bars here connected on, on either end. Uh, if, you, if you think about this um, as your, your uh, stator, and then if you think about this middle portion here as the rotor, uh, you've got your north pole, you've got your south, south pole, and then you've got these lines of magnetic flux, okay? Um, this, this portion here, when current is passed through it, so when you have got current passed through this, this portion of the rotor, it's gonna start to rotate due to the change in magnetic flux. So this guy is gonna rotate through this, these lines that change in magnetic flux, that's what's gonna cause your torque generation. Now this is where your synchronous versus um, slip speed is gonna come in. This is why an induction motor does not turn at 1200 RPM. It actually turns at say 1165 or 1170. That's because the way this field is rotating around the motor, it has to rotate slightly faster than the actual rotor itself because we need that change in magnetic flux. If it was rotating at the same speed, we wouldn't have that change, so there would be no torque generation. You know, typically, we, we recommend around 3% if it's not listed on the, on the motor nameplate. Um, the, some manufacturers do actually put it, put it in, so that's, that's fine, you can put that in. But um, yeah, anything for a 1200, 1170, 1165, that, that works well. Okay, so that was just kind of a, a quick overview, the main differences between the, the induction and the, and the permanent magnet motors.